Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to 3D classics for Nintendo 3DS, Scott the Waz by Scott the Waz. Now, this is about 3D games on the Nintendo 3DS, I guess. I don't know. I don't really know much about the 3DS. All I know is uh, it was a thing, and that's really it. All, that's all I remember. I don't really know much about the 3DS at all. All I know is that one of my friends had it, and it was a... Like, you know, it had Mario on there, and there was like a 3D effect. That's all I know about it. I don't really know much else or any other games on there. But, um, yeah, anyways, guys, we're in the description. Make sure I just got the Waz thing. So, some description. Let's just get right into it. Hey, y'all. Scott here. Put on your 3D glasses right now, because I'm about to be as realistic as ever. Whoa! I'm never gonna be truly happy. 3D, making old things new yeah. again. Out of all the games yeah. that weren't re-releasing old stuff, 3D is definitely fairly compelling. Yeah. I mean, it is kind of interesting to think about how there is a gaming console for 3D stuff. I know I'm pausing a little early, but I just want to say that th the fact that I just did that, I reminded myself that there are movies that will constantly try and throw stuff in your face, uh, you know, to kind of like really, uh, you know, show that it's a 3D movie by like doing a ton of stuff. Like for example, like Spy Kids 3D and Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Those are really the only ones I could think of that do that kind of thing where they like, yo, look at this or something like, look at this. Whoa, like right up at at you at like the camera like that sort of thing it's an entirely new way to experience something but at the end of the day that's all it is to many a gimmick in some instances 3D yeah it really is a gimmick. a gimmick it's also as i just kind of said some products kind are enhanced of. because of the pop out sync in effects they had a level of depth that if done properly can truly immerse you in that ordeal true Home movies are the most common use for like movies, how to train a dragon seemed like a no-brainer sony really leaned hard into the whole thing with many PlayStation 3 titles supporting the cause. But I want old shit in 3D, not good shit. See, that's where Nintendo steps in. They've been one of the most consistent supporters of stereoscopic 3D. They had a headset for the family Wait. Cloud, tested it out with the GameCube, f***ed up with the virtual boy. <laughs> yeah, the virtual the boy. Handheld surrounding the technology. The Nintendo 3DS was released in early 2011 featuring a glasses-free 3D display. I can't see anything. Every game supported 3D for the majority of its life. But that was a big deal. Yeah. And it wasn't a big deal. $250? I can get surgery for that price. I never said it was quality. I mean, the 3D worked, but oh my god, that's going go, dark. I get it. The effect was merely cool, but you didn't have yeah. to after a while to just go back to normal 2D visuals, pretty much how everything else. Yeah, I remember so playing it at my friend's house, at a friend's house. Gaming experience. You make good and I played Mario Kart, and it didn't really do much. You re release Excite Bike. Wow, I wonder what Nintendo will do. In the early days of the Nintendo 3DS, Nintendo announced a new that's, line that's of games. actually really fun. The 3D Classic <laughs> Series. Retro games remastered with 3D in mind, released exclusively on the Nintendo 3DS throughout 2011 and 2012 for roughly five to seven bones a pop. This is such a cool idea. Imagine the possibilities. This so, oh, old cool games for 3D. Some of the greatest games of all time. I love this company <laughs> okay that's funny <laughs> yeah not adding much to it what better way to show how it can enhance something than by using it with something we all know inside and out but these games were already 3d in terms of polygons how do you take a 2d game and convert that to scopic stereos well nintendo knew exactly who to get on the phone arika they made endless ocean and dr mario express no shit, they know what they're doing with that <laughs> development of the 3d classic slang kicked off all the way back in 2009 which two years seems like an extraordinary amount of development time for yeah. Oh, I've actually that. played that game. I guess it just goes to show what seems like the easiest things to make in the game industry, well, they can often be the toughest. Bring in a game over to a new true. platform, yeah, most assume there was an Amazon Yeah, platform. true. In Nintendo reality, Switch it's ports. A ton of work, and these 3D classics <laughs> yeah. are a similar story. Don't look great they need to rebuild sometimes. these retro games from the ground up. While yeah, I have actually played this game on like a arcade result, system well, type thing. The first game of the lineup, 3D Classics Excite. I've also played this the original Donkey Kong. This was initially seen at E3 2010 among 17 other classic games showcased case in a demo titled classic games mario brothers super mario brothers the legend of zelda metroid punch out nes open tournament golf kirby's adventure tennis the mysterious murasame castle twin b kid icarus urban champion mega man 2 castlevania smash ping pong super mario world and yoshi's island were showcased in addition to excite bike all with a 3d effect now these weren't playable demos it was merely just showing the games running in 3d the background usually just kind of sunk in but considering nearly all the 3d oh. classics titles were a part of this demo man 
imply that these were being considered for the series as well. In fact, the 3D Classics developers outright stated Tennis for NES was being worked on in the series, but it was scrapped due to just not being that appealing in 3D. Uh, okay. It just wasn't that appealing in general. Regardless, 3D Classics... <laughs> That's actually kind of funny they considered right it. ...the Nintendo 3DS's eShop launch, which occurred on June 6, 2011. And for the first month, it was completely free to download as a way to thank 3DS users for putting up with the fact that eShop wasn't available until four months after they got their damn system. Oh, yeah. The 3DS was released in an... Well, actually, I have no idea. I didn't know about that. <laughs> Why was I agreeing bitches? with that? In actuality, I was one of the schmucks who waited until August 2011 to buy their 3DS when the price dropped. I'm very good at lying like that. that was quite the Knowing discount, that that happened, that, even though it, I, I never did. ...ambassador program, which gave those who bought the system for $250 before August 10 free downloadable NES games valued at $5 a piece, 10 free downloadable Game Boy Advance games valued at $7 a piece, and I missed out on free Excite Bike and had to buy it for $6. Did I save money or not? <laughs> it's been a while since I used the 3D effect on a 3DS. I used to go all in with this sucker. Full 3D to the max. Christ, it's just the title screen, and this is one of the most loud 3D effects in the 3DS library. It's just so... 3D. That's probably because not only can you use the 3D slider to adjust the intensity, there's in-game 3D controls too, so you can gouge your eyes out, but you can gouge your eyes out just a little bit more. Go the extra mile. <laughs> Interestingly, okay, 3D funny. Classics Excite Bike has the entire background change perspective with the adjustment of the 3D slider. Like you literally see more of it when it cranks up. Most yeah, of the that's time, interesting. Adjusting the slider in 3DS games just feels like adjusting the audio's volume. You know, it just increases or decreases the 3D effect. Nothing major. This title, it literally moves the background. Yeah. Further what further that's actually kind of cool really cool that's the actually really cool never associated with the 3d slider but it's here the game itself it's excite bike don't look this is an undeniably nearly flawless recreation don't of the look. original NES game from 1985 though now it's in widescreen with a few other graphical improvements. Certain obstacles are rendered in 3D now, and it all runs so much smoother. You have analog control, meaning you can pop a wheelie, or just kind of pop a wheelie. It all adds up to the just game kinda. having a much smoother feel than ever before. However, the game having these 3D obstacles, well, they're only really in 3D when the 3D slider is on. What the developers did was fundamentally make the game exactly like the 2D original when the slider is down all the way. But when you crank it up more and more, it strays farther and farther. It's really bizarre. Some scenes, specifically oh, what? menus, are still in a pseudo 4x3 letterbox, which is strange considering these were remade from scratch. They didn't have to be constrained to 4x3, but they chose to. And they chose to do it with the easiest part of the game to make widescreen. Like, wouldn't the actual game be the hardest to turn widescreen? In this yeah, what? Game? That's kind of funny. Background? Couldn't that be done during a lunch break? I don't care. I mean, it looks fine. It's not like they kept black bars there. They spruced it up. It's just confusing to me. The biggest upgrade, though, has to be the track editor. Excite Bike infamously had a track editor that was a bit of a nightmare to use, and as a bonus, was pointless. You couldn't save your tracks. It gave you the option to save, but that just meant for as long as your game was turned on, because when you turn it off, I got pissed for you. 3D Classics Excite Bike really? numerous slots to save multiple tracks to. Oh, the damn. has been completely revamped in such oh, a small way. Oh, that's actually cool. We can shift through parts more more elegantly. However, if you still want to use the editor in the style of the original, you have that option. At the end of the day, this is the definitive version of Excite Bike. That's Mike. cool, it, actually. It's not even taking the 3D effect into consideration. With it is no contest. This is the way to play Excite Bike. It's a fun arcade style NES game about making jumps properly to get the best time. And now, it's more realistic than ever. This title That's set cool the design. standard for what I expected out of the 3D classic sign. Didn't know that was before. a thing. Taking all those games Nintendo demo. I'm talking about the 3DS. Then, yeah. Consideration, I was excited. Like, come on, Super Mario World, Zelda, Mega Man 2, so many possibilities. Yeah, it didn't happen. How about Xavius, you dumb bitch? This launched right alongside 3D Classics Excite Bike in Japan on June Xavius? 7th. Everywhere else, we What's Xavius? Later on July oh yeah, the game I, I said I played. I had it on one of those Namco plug Which I actually was telling the truth, by the way. I've been happy. Yeah, this isn't a Nintendo game. It's a developed and published by Namco Arcade Joint. Well, I think we all at least know of Xavius. I mean, come on, we're all friends here. It's not a favor for many of us. Yeah, I didn't know the name of it, but I, I played it before. Is beloved in Japan. Well, here it didn't see as much success. It was the first game they developed through the 3D Classics line. Japanese players and developers adore Xevious, and it's not difficult to see why. It's a solid arcade title. I just yeah. personally prefer the likes of Galaga. But even if players outside of Japan, yeah. i.e. the man myself, I, weren't too excited about Xevious itself, the idea of non-Nintendo games being eligible for this series gave me goosebumps. Hopping into 3D Classic Xevious, it retains the exact same menu setup as Excite Bike, including the same main menu music. Literally all the options are the same across the whole series, so it's all about the game now.
The 3D effect is so good it made me death. Well, yeah. What? Was that the review in 1982? Just like Excite Bike, this is in widescreen as well. Though being a vertical shooter, there's not a ton you could do to make the game widescreen while also perfectly recreating it. Like, okay, if Zevius is in widescreen now, well, there's gonna be no enemies on the sides of the screen. And if you put enemies on the sides, this isn't my Zevius. So the developers put clouds on the sides to give the game widescreen, oh, which is okay. a brilliant solution. The 3D effect helps differentiate True. between what's next to you and below you. And you have two different shots, one for enemies in the air and one for enemies on the ground. And as a dumb kid, i.e. four days ago, never really thought about how perspective really plays into Zevius. These things are below you and require you to drop a bomb on them. I yeah. Just I do remember that in the original when I played it, that you had to do that, and I could never understand that. So I just quit the game. What obstacles are right in front of you, and which ones are on the ground? And for a game all about firing the right weapon, depending on the plane your enemy's on, hey, I'll give in. This was a good choice for 3D classics. Other than that, it's just Zevius. There's no real new additions. You can quick save, save high scores. There's not much else to it. A save high scores. Nine. It's okay. When you're in the $6 territory, there's not a ton you can do to argue against its value. Like, what were you gonna spend those $6 on? Xevious? Oh, he's got a bunch of things out. The next 3D <laughs> Classics release came to Japan on July 13th and everywhere else on August 18th. That being 3D Classics, you gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> Urban Champion is an old school black Urban box NES game. Okay, I saw don't know this Excite one. Bike was a black box game too, and it's actually older than Urban Champion. Which gives Urban Champion less of an excuse. It's a really example <laughs> of a fight. Game. Yeah. Nintendo's first to be exact. You just punch and punch and punch your opponent, and whoever gets punched into a manhole loses. Just like real life. Now this game is sort of the just like real of life. Nintendo's early titles generally considered one of their worst. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, I wouldn't willingly play it, but I'd so rather endure that's, this than most that's a good bit. black box sports titles. It's just so basic and simple and stupid and clunky and slow, and I think Nintendo knows this and re-releases it all the time as a joke. It got an arcade release, numerous virtual console releases, it can be played on a card, and it was the third 3D classic title, which again, I'm positive they did this as a joke. I mean, Urban Champion just doesn't have anything warranting a 3D re-release. Like, what are you gonna do? Finally answer the question, oh, where is this building? Turns out 3D <laughs> Classics Urban Champion is the most in-depth one so far. The title adds up. Deep in the settings, you can turn on a new camera mode where after every what? round, it shows us exactly what was going on, 30 <laughs> degrees to the left. And they pretty much recreated what? the entire game with 3D models. Why we not step foot on Mars? Because we wasted our time doing sh like this. On top of that, multiplayer is- That actually game. looks Back insane. They turned, wow. Titles for enduring a certain number of rounds, which brings in- That's actually funny. In a minute. Man, I played 3D Classic Serpent Champion for four minutes. I was only expecting to play for three. So they really went above and beyond. That's really fun. <laughs> That's a really good show. Like remake Urban Champion to see how much they could improve a game that legitimately needed improvements. I think that should be done more often with remakes. Remake a game that actually needs remade. At the end of the day, however, the 3D Classics developers stick very close to the originals, improving things that need improving, but making the game at its core still feel the same, which is a great mantra to have, just not for Urban Champion. Yeah, really <laughs> yeah just for now. This game yeah. that much better without changing it completely. This is definitely the definitive version of the game, but for the amount of development time this probably took, wasn't worth it. Like I said, the developers might have decided on this game to see if they could improve it substantially, but I don't think they chose it for that reason. I think they chose it because they thought it'd be funny. It was only five dollars. <laughs> if they did, it's happened. funny though. Next month on August 10th in Japan and September 22nd elsewhere, Twin the fourth B. title released, 3D Classics Twin B. Who? Twin B was an arcade vertical shooter by Konami ported to the Famicom and various other oh, Japanese what? computers in the mid 80s. It's barely out of presence here in the States and it released under a different name, Rainbow Bell, in a Konami collection for the DS over here in 2007. Oh. This 3D Classics version was the first time it released under its true title. That's awesome. Awesome, but why? Why Twin it's B? Awesome, but why? All Konami games you could have remade. I love the way you said that. Why this one? Twin B seems to be a similar story to Xevious. It feels like Nintendo has a lot of love for this game, as just like Xevious, they keep respecting the hell out of it. Yeah, it, it looked. I was thinking, person. is like, is this just Xevious? Part of the Famicom mini series of games on the Game Boy Advance in Japan, and also released as a game on the NES and Nintendo Switch Online library, and. Also, just like Xevious, it's a vertical shooter where you have two weapons, one attacking enemies in front of you and one attacking enemies below you. So, okay, that makes sense why it would be chosen for the 3D treatment, but when you only have six games to do this with and you chose a game nobody's heard of that already had very similar gameplay to another game you already yeah. had, this being one of only two games in this lineup that Nintendo didn't develop, so they had to go out of their way to license out. I'll stop talking shit on Twin B. Well, it's Twin B, pretty much the same game as the Famicom what? version. What? Which is also kind of strange. This was originally an arcade title, and when 
Xevious got the 3D Classics treatment, they used the arcade version, but with Twin B, they didn't use the arcade version, they used the Famicom one. And on top of that, the game's not even in widescreen. They have this weird curtain border on the edges when they could have done something like with Xevious and put clouds on the side or yeah, something. Yeah, what? There are clouds in the game, after all. The 3D effect is fine. I mean, like with Xevious, the game uses dual planes, so it's totally logical. I just don't think it adds a ton to the experience. But Twin B was a game that made sense to be converted to 3D, even if it didn't need it. The game's good. It's a fun retro shooter. They added rapid fire, which is nice, but overall, it's just an odd choice for the series. Similar to Urban Champion, this one was also only $5 compared to the 6 stretch for Excitebike and Xevious. Honestly, I kind of like this one more than Xevious, but that game had more work put into the 3D conversion. At the end of the day, I wouldn't trust either one of these with my life. <laughs> well, it took a while, but we finally got a game with some meat on its bones. Later down the line on November Kirby's 17th, Adventure. everywhere other than Japan, is that Kid Icarus? Kid Icarus? On April 25th, 2012. I'm guessing under 3D Classics Kirby's Adventure. It's about time we got a game that wasn't just a simple high score type game. And Kirby's Adventure was an excellent pick, as it was one of the kind of weird games for NES. That's the thing, though. Kirby is kind of like a weird game to do that. Try and like make it 3D. Uh, unless it maybe looks cool, but like when you really think about it, like Kirby, even at its state right now as a 3D game, well, 3D game, it's 2D still. Like the, everything is 3D, the models are 3D, like, but you still are playing a 2D game, a 2D side scroller. So I, I feel like it's kind of weird for a Kirby series to kind of do that. Has a Kirby series ever done that? Where it's like 3D? Maybe, uh, there was one game I know that kind of did that, and it was like a racing game with Kirby. But, I don't know about, like, but I don't know if that really counts. I don't know about any other Kirby games that have done something like that. But because of that, the title experienced a ton of technical issues on that platform, which is literally the only thing they really fixed in the 3D Classics version. This is just Kirby's Adventure, but it runs buttery smooth now. It's like I'm really there! The game is still in 4x3, oh, yeah. which is disappointing. It's not a big deal, but when the first three games were given widescreen and now these don't, I feel gypped. The 3D effect is pretty minimal here as well. They kind of dim the background a bit, which you can turn on or off, but even at max 3D, it's just not that impressive. It's fine, it's not bad. It oh, just what? adds nothing to the experience. What? Okay. The bottom screen more as well. The other titles just put random info on there, usually stats that would have taken up screen real estate and Kirby's Adventure always had this big bar at the bottom showing the ability you had, the score, your life counter. Yeah, Urban what? Champion could take all of its info and put it on the bottom screen. Why, can't Why didn't they do that? One for Urban Champion going against oh, oh, God. This is the best value of the series so far, though, being a game that actually has more than 30 minutes of content. And they could have done a lot more, but just the fact the game runs smoothly comparative to the NES version is enough to make this pretty definitive. Now, is it worth $2 more than the 5 Nintendo charge for the game on Wii and Wii U? This is just ridiculous. Nintendo. I was two dollars short for my surgery money because of you. Next up is 3D oh Classics. Oh my God! Bring that joke Sorry, back! Wow. We're finally doing some actual games. This released alongside Kid Icarus Uprising here in North America as a pre-order bonus on March 23rd, 2012, oh, before nice. releasing to the public on April 19th for six dollars. It released as a Club Nintendo reward in Japan on January 18th, in Europe on February 2nd, and Australia on April 12th. Yes, who else had what? my birthdays? 3D Classics Kid Icarus is based on the original Japanese Famicom Disk System version, which you can Disc tell by the music. System? The disc system featured different audio oh. capabilities from that of the NES, so games like Kid Icarus, Metroid, Zelda 1 and 2, those have different soundtracks in Japan on the system. Not vastly different, but they do have a different quality to them. I think they used okay. the Japanese version specifically because it featured saving capabilities. Over here, it was a password pack, which they were very proud of. Damn. Again, this isn't in Ooh. widescreen, so the first three did, the last three didn't. Instead, we get this sort of tacky border. I wish the 4x3 games gave you the option to change it or turn it off at the very least. The 3D effect is similar to Kirby's. It's not game changing, but it's much more robust than that game. I feel like there's a lot more going on here, and there's more going on with the features too. You can play with the original controls, but the 3D Classics control option features a ton of quality of life improvements. Just better overall. Jumping and shooting is better, timing's adjusted, speed's adjusted. It's not a whole oh, different okay. game. It just feels smoother now. But the biggest addition is the color and background. This version includes backdrops, and they look gorgeous. In the original Kid Icarus, much like various other NES games, oh, didn't. a plain black background. It was just bad black. The exact same. I remember okay. when they added Skyward the Smash Brothers Brawl as a stage, I thought, this looks nothing like Kid Icarus. It looks good! These backgrounds help you distinguish not oh, only God. where you are in the game level-wise, but also the story. Now it's like, yeah, no shit, I'm in the underworld. With the backgrounds and new control <laughs> options, the safety okay, I get that. Islands, 
this is my favorite way to play the original Kid Icarus. The original has its charm, but it's not too fun to go back to today. This one helps me to appreciate the game so much more, and they didn't even change a ton. They just tweaked elements that really needed it. Because I think even the most diehard Kid Icarus fans won't admit the first game was perfect. You're gonna have mega fans say how if you're not playing the original, you're just not playing Kid Icarus. You truly haven't lived until you've been shot in the face. But you can play this game just like Jeez. the original if you want to. The new control options just made it a more fluid and fun experience experience. If the challenge from the NES game came from how slow and clunky the game controlled at times, you beating it doesn't mean you're the gaming messiah. It kind of just means you had more free time to beat the game. And with True. that, the 3D Classics line wrapped up. Okay, I guess that's what it. What a disgusting family photo. <laughs> so I followed these games extensively as they were releasing. I bought Urban Champion on release day, and I still haven't made my money back on that investment. 3D Classics Excite Bike. What was song was that? I downloaded on I've heard that before. Yes, and I bought it for $6 three weeks after it was made available for free. I got Xevious and Kirby's Adventure shortly after. The 3D Classics as a concept was something I think everybody could get behind. 8-bit remasters in 3D, they were still the same games at their core, but enhanced in multiple ways while retaining the same visuals. Music, the background music I've heard amazing. before, like an AVGN they video. They just picked the worst games to do it with. The developers commented on how difficult developing these titles were. They probably thought this would be easy peasy going into it, and then two years later they said, voila, Xevious. Now, I don't doubt these games took a lot of effort yeah. to make. They didn't emulate anything. These games were remade and enhanced in more ways than one. You can truly see how skilled and hardworking developers were in not only remaking these games for the better, but retaining the feel of their original releases. That's not as easy to do as it sounds. And I'm sure, judging by the amount of 3D games they had as demos at E3 2010, they had far more plans for this series, but cut it after the six because they just took too long to make. Plus, they didn't sell as well as they wanted, and I totally understand that. You know, oh, okay, that yeah, I guess that makes sense. Money back but that just makes me ask why they chose urban fucking champion <laughs> yeah very simple urban champion based title most of them were good, but why didn't they do more titles like Kirby's Adventure or Kid Icarus? Why not Zelda 1 with the top-down perspective? That would have worked perfectly. Even something like Super Mario Bros. 3 with the whole stage play aesthetic would be highlighted that much more with the 3D effect showing depth with the shadows. Oh, yeah. Mock Rider, if they wanted to stick to simpler games, that would have been good. Why not Game Boy games or Super Nintendo games or just different third-party ones other than two vertical shooters which weren't that popular to begin with and honestly have a bit too much in common? I'm sure it wouldn't yeah. have came down to these titles being the first they tried out because they were simpler at the end of the day. If the series was a success, they would move on to more popular titles like Mario and Zelda games. But how would the series be a success when these were the games you were depending on? All these games were on systems that That's very true. On the 3DS through the That's very round. true. And putting out Super Mario Brothers for five bucks on the 3DS with little to no effort involved probably still made Nintendo ten times more money than remaking Excite Bike in 3D for only one dollar more. Now 3D Classic Serpent Champion was Real? the same oh. price as most unaltered NES games on the 3DS Urban e shop. Chance. It was the same price they charged for Urban Champion on Wii and Wii U with no changes or improvements. No wonder they canceled this series we're gonna put more effort into this re-release but charge the exact same price as we always did or one more dollar i personally was hoping to see a sister series on wii u called hd classics where it's the same idea but eight and 16-bit games would be remastered in hd but i can always write to nintendo about that later well that's not the complete end <laughs> to the story where nintendo left off sega oh god the echo Carol the dolphin the remasters the sega 3d classics kicking off in japan on december 26th i've i've seen that i've heard it's bad the same series but i guess the term well, I've seen AVGN. AVGN's video Compared to video Nintendo's six game output, Sega released 27 of them. They know something we don't. So this is what I think happened. Arika is a fantastic studio. They've made some phenomenal games. They're not a porting house. You give the Teddy Together guys Excite Bike, it's gonna take them a while to figure out. They did a superb job, but I feel like they weren't as efficient as they could have been through development considering this was relatively new territory for them. Sega's 3D classics were developed by M2. This is their thing. They almost exclusively work with re-releases and consistently are contracted by Sega for this kind of stuff. And their 3D classics have a lot of the same bells and whistles as Arika's, so I think this kind of explains why there were only six Nintendo games. Because my god, these are packed with features! You can adjust so much, including whether or not the 3D pops out or falls in, the screen looking more like a classic CRT, what system we want the games to be running on since there were extremely minor differences between playing Sonic on different models of the Genesis. Some games go further oh, than nice. others. Some are in wide screen and others are just in 4x3. Some have touchscreen control for more precise movement like Power Drift or Galaxy Force 2 and others, even if they are pretty basic like Puyo Puyo 2, Streets of Rage or Sonic 1 and 2, 
and they're at the very least really good versions that run great and look fantastic. However, Sonic 1 and 2 not being in widescreen, like come on man, the mobile phone versions were, why not these ones? If Fantasy Zone can be in widescreen, I don't understand why Streets of Rage can't be, and that mentality I have with pretty much all these 3D re-releases by Sega or Nintendo. I am very curious as to why some games got widescreen and others didn't. There were so many Sega 3D classics that released. Some of them were exclusive to Japan, some of them were exclusive to the physical collections they put out. The first the one was the only one that? to come out here, Sega 3D Classics Collection, and it's so well done and full of life. All I'd right. say this is one time where Sega easily ousted Nintendo. Their 3D classics were from all kinds of different systems. Sorry, this is the part where I don't really understand what he's talking about, so that's mainly why I'm silent. I just want to mention that, because I was kind of silent for the last couple of minutes. Because I didn't really know what he was talking about. I think he was talking about Sega remakes or something. I just wish they did more of them. Specifically Nintendo. I think if Sega did more, they'd pass out. They just chose the wrong games to do this line with. I'm happy they did what they did. I mean, these are all the definitive versions of each game. But why Twin B? Why Urban Champion? I'm sick of Urban, living in the dark Urban about Champion. this. I'm going to go into the credits and find who to harass. What does it say? Scott the Waz? But there's just no credits. I'll give a reek of this. They're hard to threaten. That's a really good ending joke. That's a really good ending joke. Our concluding joke. Honestly, yeah, this video was... It, it was very good, entertaining. I actually had no idea there was a thing called 3D Classics on the Nintendo 3DS. And I kind of like how he just went from game to game explaining, you know, the flaws. Especially Urban Champion. Well, no. Just also, like, talking... Well, just sharing his opinion on, like, each each one, and also explain to the audience what it originally was. Uh, yeah, and honestly, I, I got a couple laughs out of this one. I thought this was a really well-edited, very funny video. I do like it. It's very good. But yeah, anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the like, and subscribe to my channel. See you next one. Bye!